Hi all, Karthik here from Design School by WP Algorithm. In this video, I want to talk about a plugin called Style Kits for Elementor by Analog WP. Well, what exactly are Style Kits and why do you even need them in the first place? Well, Style Kits is a free plugin that you can find in the WordPress repository. Just search for Style Kits and it's this one by Analog WP. Install activated. What exactly are global styles and why do you need them? When you're working with Elementor, few tasks get repetitive. So, so if I drag in a heading widget, did you ever wish that you can set a default font size and a color to the headings that you drag? And this applies to each and every widget. Did you ever wish that you could change the hover color and the normal color of a button when you drag it? This can be done to some extent by using your themes. But again, if you change your theme, all your changes are gone. And this will require you to disable Elementor options in order to make this work. Well, what if we can have a global styling system that will define styles such as font size, font family, button hover color, button background color, and even column gap globally. By globally, I'll explain what it is in a bit, but what if you could just have the styles work out of the box? So as soon as you drag a widget, what if you can get the styles defined? Or what if you can have something defined in order to make this work automatically without you having to go to style tab and changing all the colors manually. This is more of a time saver rather than groundbreaking feature. Anyway, this is style kits and this is how it works. So once you install style kits, you can go back to your admin dashboard. There you'll find something called style kits. So you can click on templates or library and it will take you to this splash screen. So you can click on style kits and you have few styles defined here. All you can see is a font or basically you can see how your text would look like and then few other sample text and also the colors. These are some of the default kits that you have. You don't really have to use them as is. You can simply import either of them to get started and customize it the way you want. So I'll just import this side kit. It says it's imported. I'll just close it. Now when you create any Elementor page, post or custom post type, or even template, whenever you're editing with Elementor, these will be available within your Elementor screen. That's how it works. Well, this works in two ways. One is at a page level and the second one is globally. I'll explain what globally means. So once you've imported a style kit, it will be available within your Elementor panel. So I'll just create a new page and then I'll click on edit with Elementor and I'll explain how this works. These default style kits are just a starting point and you can view all the installed style kits or imported site kits by clicking on this manage style kits button. So you can now see that I have click installed on my particular website. I'll go to my Elementor page. You can basically go to any Elementor page, post or even a template or even a custom post type. It doesn't matter. So you can click on the settings cog and at page level under style tab, you'll now find all the settings for your style kits. So here on my new page, I just have a button. I just have a heading. I also have a text editor widget dragged in and you can see that there are few default styles which are being applied. So when I click on settings, go to style tab. When I select click, all the styles are clearly applied to this. You can obviously change this. Let's go to body typography. I'll click on this. I'll change the family to maybe this and you can obviously see the particular text being reflected here. Let me also increase the text size and you can see that the text editor widget which has the body text automatically changes based on the settings that we make here. And this applies to any widget with text in it. So let's also drag in a tabs widget. And even here you can see the changes that we make from the style kit menu. I'll go to body typography again. I'll change this to a different font. And you can see both the text editor widget and also the text within the tabs widget and even the tab title changes to the font that we just changed. I'll just bring that back to overlock, which looks a bit readable. And you can customize each aspect of your style kit. Let me also customize the heading font. I'll go with oxygen mono and you can see the heading changes. I can also set a different font size and each everything for h1, h2, h3, 
till h6 you can also choose a font size for xxl when you click on this and when you go to the content tab you have size option for your headings you can select small medium large xl xxl you can also customize these values using the style kits so that's what this does so you can pick how much should be the font size for xxl how much should be the font size for excel and a lot more let's also change the global colors if i change the text and heading color to something else you can see that being reflected here i'll just bring that back to a normal color and you have a lot of colors primary accent color and primary accent color is used for tabs accordions buttons and a lot more let's also drag in a button widget again and the primary accent color is also the hover color for a button so that's how all the settings that you make all the changes that you make in the style kit are affected and once you make all the uh, changes you have to click on update style kit to actually update this particular style kit with all the options so now click style kit will have all the options that you have updated here if you use the same style kit on another page they'll have all the options that you have just updated here so you can reload the page and see if our changes are taken place once the page reloads again you can see that the tab color is the accent color that we just set let me also drag in another heading widget and it will have the styles that you have defined using the style kit you can click on update to update the page post or a template so this is how your style kits work just select a starting style kit start making the changes you can also customize the column gap between the widgets you can also change the body background color and you might be wondering if it affects your actual element pages well this is completely non destructive so if you still want to go ahead and change the hover color you can still do that at widget level so if i change it to red hover color you can see that the style kit can easily be overridden at widget level the main use of style kit is to have defaults for everything for every widget section and a column and the settings within the style kits also include body style so you can set a background for a page so whenever you choose the style kit whenever you choose a particular style kit on any page post or a custom post type or a template all the styles or all the settings defined within this will automatically apply to that particular page you don't have to do the repetitive tasks again so that's the reason why you need to use style kits also there's no real way to change global colors of course you can set your default color palette and then there are something called light background and dark background in css i'll show that in a bit you can basically put the class name and this particular color will be applied to things that you that have this class name we'll get to that in a bit so you can also do uh, button styling using this so you can change the access preset defined in elementor so you can change the typography for access preset for small preset and for various things or for various button presets you can change all the types of things that you want there's also something called column gap so here you can set the space with, between widgets which is set at in the wordpress dashboard you can also override that using a style kit and there is something called outer section padding this is a setting unique to this particular plugin so let's see what it does so let's go to column gap and let's actually change the column gap to maybe 100 and you can see that all the columns will have 100 pixels padding if you change it to 20 it has 20 and then there are few names called default padding narrow padding extended padding white padding and a lot more so you can change these values or a section and here you can find the outer section padding option so here you'll find normal small medium and these are the presets defined by the style kit itself so click on settings cog go to style kit you also need to update your style kit to make sure that all these changes are saved in this preset so here's the workflow you import your style kit with an option there are few default options you just import them and within the page within the drop down you just select one of them and then you customize each of them to your needs and don't forget to update the style kit and next time you use this preset on another page that you create 
all these options will automatically apply it. So how useful are these uh, style kits with third party templates? So when you're downloading or when you're adding third party templates, let's actually add one. So I'll add one from the Elementor library. So this is the template or maybe I'll just go with another one. This is a pro template. I'll just insert this template. And the question here is, will this style kits be applied to this particular template? The answer is yes and no. Yes, when the options are set as default. So if the heading in the template is set to default, these style kits will be applied. But if the headings in the templates are set to something else, obviously you're overriding it at widget level. So these style kits won't be applied. In short, when you import a template, all the widgets that have default value will get all the values defined in the style kit. It's as simple as that. So I'll let my page load and get back. So I just uh, imported a template and the style kit options will only work with those that have default settings. So for example, if I take this text and when I go to typography, it's set to Playfair. So it won't work and it won't have the settings defined in it. But on the other hand, if I go to the content tab within this icon box, the family is set to default. Let's actually change the font or the heading text or the body text here. And you can see that being reflected here. This is actually a template, but the style kit settings will work with this because the value of this particular heading is set to default in the typography tab. So whenever you're working with templates, these style kit tabs or these style kit options will be applied to those that have default values in them. So make sure when you're working with templates, if you want a different font, make sure you're overriding that. If you want a different icon color for it, so they've set a primary color. If you override this at a widget level, this won't have the options or this won't be affected by the options set in the style kit. But when you drag in a new widget, so let's drag in an icon widget. I'll just drag it over here and it'll have the options set in the style kit. So that's how style kit works. So you can also save the style kit as your own one. So instead of making changes to the original demo that you imported, you can make a couple of changes. So let's actually do that. I'll go to body typography. I'll click on this and without overriding the original one, let's pick this one. Let's also change the heading sizes a bit or maybe heading typography a bit. So instead of overpass mono, I'll just select oxygen mono. Let's click on style kit. I'll click on save as and I'll just give this style kit my SK1. So when you do that, it will also be available as a preset that can be selected from within the drop down menu. Let's go back, click on style. And here you'll find my style kit one. It's as if you've downloaded a new preset. So you can make number of changes to the original preset and save them as copies by using the save as button. What exactly is global style? And there's one more thing to note, updating this Elementor template won't change your style kits. You have to manually update your style kits by clicking on update style kit. So that's one thing to note here. And if you're not really happy with all the changes that you've made in the style kit, and if you want to set all the settings or changes that you made in the page to the defaults, you can click on tools and click on reset all. And when you do that, all the items are then brought back to the default settings. So these may be inherited from your theme or these may be the defaults defined in your Elementor. So if you want, don't want to make or if you want to revert back to the original changes or original settings, without actually using the style kit, you can simply click on reset all and that'll remove the style kit from this particular page. You can now start fresh or if you want, you can simply pick the preset again and all those changes are brought back. If you don't want those changes, go to tools and simply reset all. You can also export these changes as CSS. I'll get to that in a bit. But first, let me explain the global styles. Well. This is all happening at a page level, right? So when you select a style kit, you can obviously update the preset, but what if you want to have the style kit 
consistent across your website. So let's say I select my SK1 and what if I want to make a change here and what if I want the change to be made across my website wherever this style kit is used. So if I create a new page called style kit 2 and if I use this preset there as well, what if I can make the change here and also the changes should be updated there. So that's the reason why you should select global style kit. I'll make this my SK1 preset a global style kit. So if I click on that, I'm brought back to the dashboard where you can set it as global. I'll select my SK1. I'll click on save changes. Let's create a new page and we'll select the preset and I'll show you what that is. I'll click on add new. I'll create a new page and add couple of things or maybe import a template. I'll just call this page my SK2. I'll publish this page. I'll edit with Elementor. Now this page loads. I'll put these two pages next to each other. So these are the heading text and the icon colors. Let me also drag in. Okay, let's drag in a heading over here. So this has the default font. I'll click on this and it obviously selected my global style kit by default. So let's say I just want to change the font size and also the color over here. I'll do that. I'll go to style kit. Since it's global, if I change the things here, it will also be updated here. Let's do that. I'll go to headings typography. I'll change it from oxygen mono to this. Let's also change the global colors. So if I change the text and heading color to maybe this one, I'll click on style kit and update the style kit here. I'll click on yes and that would re re reload the page. Now when I update the page and apply changes, it automatically detects all the changes and applies them. That's because we've used this my SK1 which is a global style kit. So the main use of global style, style kits is to make changes dynamically and also whenever you create a new page, this global style kit is automatically applied. Unlike normal style kits, you have to pick them from the style tab of a page, post or a custom post type. If you define a global style kit, it will automatically be applied at the page level. Or you can obviously clear out the global style kit by using the reset all options. But global style kit will apply the style kit by default, whereas your normal style kits, if you have not set any global style kit, you have to manually pick the style kit from the drop down over here. So just like that, you can pick any of the presets that you want. You can pick the click preset. So it's a different one from my custom global preset. So that's how these style kits work. You can also update all the CSS, click on export CSS, put it in the customizer area. If you have the pro version, click on setting stock, go to advanced and put your custom CSS here. And then you can also disable the plugin itself or remove the plugin but it would still have all the styles defined in the style kit. So this is a brief explanation of style kits by Analog WP. They're coming out with the pro version of a plugin, but the only thing is that Elementor might implement these global styles at certain point because it is imminent. They're already planning on it, but I don't know when they'll do it. So this is style kits for Elementor the default way to define headings, heading size, button color, button hover color, and all the things that you want to set in Elementor without you having to do all the things again and again. So these are like the presets for all the widgets and their settings. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have any questions regarding this. This is it for now. I'll talk to you in the next video. Subscribe if you didn't already. Peace.